Bonjour and welcome to episode 23 of Regen Rovers. In today's episode, we're going to be taking on Wildstone, one of the more famous teams in the division, I guess, because of a certain someone. And we're also taking on Sutton United in the FA Trophy second round. Now, you can see here, we've been on a bit of a roll. In the last episode, it was a right old struggle, wasn't it? Trying to get going into second gear. We never really got out of first gear. And we stumbled to a few draws and an extra time win against Whiteleaf in the FA Trophy first round. But promising signs for the new tactic, for the wing-backs. Hal Croft and, and Greg Winter both now have one-star role ability, so they're improving. Hal Croft in particular, look at him, everything's going up. He could be a star. And I've managed to get him to sign a new contract, which will run out at the end of the 2019-20 season. So 18 months left. He's earning a lot. He's one of the highest earners at the club, £250 a week. Might in fact be the highest earner. And no, Dion Mills is actually the highest earner. But Halcroft's the second highest earner. But he is a top player. He's actually the, the joint top valued player at the team, along with Simmons, Woodland and Dr. Jones. I don't know why Dr. Jones is so highly valued. I understand why Woodland is. Everything going up for him as well. He's got loads of assists for me. Eight assists this season in the league. Hasn't managed to score a goal in the league. He scored an FA Trophy goal. But I like the look of Woodland. I, I know a lot of you are fans of Woodland as well. But getting back to the fixtures anyway. Um, so since the last episode, we've continued our unbeaten run. We actually managed to get a very good draw against third-placed Maidenhead United. They were third at the time anyway. Jake Humphreys put them in the lead. We only had three shots and 38% possession against a very strong Maidenhead. But my tactic's all about countering. And we only had three shots, um, but we scored a goal. And football is about scoring goals, believe it or not. And we took probably our only chance of the game, really. Gordon got the assist. It was a lovely slipped ball through to Barry. who found the back of the net. That was his eighth goal of the season. Did have a bit of a goal drought, actually, before that goal. Then a very impressive 3-0 win against East Thurrock United. We with the dominant team in terms of uh, chances in this game. They did actually have more possession, but that's to be expected with the tactic that I'm playing now. Jack Young got the opening goal. He's still scoring goals for us. I thought maybe he'd have, have a quieter season this year, but he's up to, I think, 15 goals now. That was a strange sort of header from Berry, but he got the assist for Young. It was a delightful finish. Then Berry actually got his ninth goal of the season, putting us 2-0 up. Young into Winter, Greg Winter crossing it in, and Berry with a like backwards header. That was an impressive header, I must say. And then Harrison Lane, of all people, managed to get the third and crucial goal, I guess, to really confirm victory. A brilliant strike from the versatile defender. He's come back into the team and, and playing all right, to be fair to him. A little bit of a disappointing draw against Gosport, who were in the relegation zone at the time, but they have since managed to get out of it. So perhaps it's not too bad a draw away from home. Bradley Berry, third goal in three games for him. Tenth goal of the season, opening the scoring in the 22nd minute. Let's look at this one then. So Dr. Jones and Joe Gordon have been playing a bit more lately because Woodland, unfortunately, has got injured. And they've done all right, Dr. Jones and Gordon. Of course, we saw Gordon get that assist. That was a nice finish from Bar uh, Berry. Then a really, really good win against Havant and Waterlooville, who are fighting for a playoff place. 3-1. Uh, Dion Mills opened the scoring early on in the game. We only had five shots in the entire game to their 16, but we scored three goals. We are clinical at the moment. Young, it was a, a brilliant assist. He did so well, and the keeper should have done better from the Mills shot. Young then managed to get two goals, his uh, 14th and 15th of the season, I do believe. This is Gordon playing it through to Young. He finds the back of the net. Gordon, he's got good vision, hasn't he? He's a useful player. He was injury prone last year, but he's getting more game time this year. And he's, I, I like him. I've always liked him just because of the fact that he's got high vision, which really is, it sets him apart from the rest of my team, to be honest. Jack Young did make it 3-0. A great header. Lobbing it over the keeper. And that, yep, that was his 15th goal of the season. So it leaves us in a very good position. You can see here, we are 13th in the league. We're only four points, uh, five points above the relegation zone, sorry. Hungerford Town have dropped into the relegation zone. 
Looks like Dorchester are going to get relegated. But we are flying high. Seven wins, nine draws, eight defeats. Only a minus one goal difference now. 30 points. It is incredibly tight. I mean, realistically, we could finish, hopefully, not as not below 19th, but we could finish 19th. Or is there a chance of a playoff push? It's a very slim chance, but you never know. We did beat Haven't and Waterlooville 3-1. We've scored three goals a few times of this tactic now against Kinstonian, East Thurrock and Heaven in Waterlooville. We sometimes do turn it on in other games. It's a little bit drab and it finishes 1-1. Not a huge number of clean sheets, but the defence is certainly tighter now. And I'm going with this team today. We're playing Bradley in goal. Uh, Grant Ward did play one game in the last few games, but uh, I've put Stephen Bradley back in. He seems to be performing reasonably well at the moment. 7.04 average rating over the last five games. Charlie Lofts, our new sign... Well, signed him couple months ago didn't I unfortunately his training's not going very well but he's going to play alongside Fox and Simmons Fox has been brilliant this season I must say he's got the second highest average racing behind Greg Winter who is excelling in the left wing back role a sheriff playing defense midfield he just needs to curb his yellow card habit he just can't seem to break it he's addicted to getting yellow cards hasn't got sent off this year but he will now, and he's going to guaranteed to get sent off today. I'm touching a wooden desk. Hopefully, that will be enough to protect us from a red uh, from a Gareth Sheriff red card. Howcroft, like I said, he's improving on the right wing back role. He's not really got very good average ratings, but he's getting there. There's not really any, anyone else that I'd like to play there. Chris Breach has left the club. Remember, Harrison Lane could play there. I could stick Leon Thompson or Sam Palmer there, but defensively, they're not very good. So I'm going with Howcroft. Dr. Jones is playing alongside Mills today. Leon Thompson is, uh, no, Leon Woodland, sorry, is injured. He's had a great season, Leon Thompson. One, uh, Woodland, oh, getting muddled up. Thompson's not really done anything this year, but Woodland has. He's done very well. Mills is actually playing a lot better in the standard central midfield role, so I might play Woodland as the box-to-box -box midfielder when he's back, or I might change the role around. Maybe box-to-box -box midfielder just doesn't really work. Dr. Jones is going to play it today. And I'm actually playing now two advanced forwards in Young and Berry. It's worked. We've scored three goals in the last two, two out of the last three games. So there's something there. Region, region, Rovers, region, Rovers, region, region, region. So Wildstone will be tough. They are only one point above us. So a win could take us really high up the table if results really go our way we could actually be in the top half of the table for the first time in a long time if you just look at us we, we had a good start to the season remember but we dropped back into the relegation zone and we've been i mean up to the halfway point of the season we were in and around the relegation zone we were outside of it but only one place above really and since the 20th game since we've reached the second half of the season we've just gone from strength to strength so that's fabulous stuff <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question for the comment section today, guys. I want you to suggest to me a place in England, let, let's say, sorry to those living outside of, of England, but suggest a place in England that you think I should visit. Now, I, I might reply to some of you guys saying, I've already been there, it's great, or, you know, pretty awful place. No, I won't say that. <laughs> but yeah, I'd just like some suggestions. Where do you think Paul should go for his next big day out? Here come Wildstone early on in this game. Looking dangerous. It's a... Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. Great. We survived. That's the main thing. Those that live abroad, you're welcome to suggest a country or a place in your country that I should visit one day. I really do want to visit lots of places in the world. Um, I'm a geographer. I did a geography degree, so I love the world and I want to visit lots of different places. And oh, we get lucky again there. We just about survived Wildstone all over us. They are the better team. They were relegated last season. So they've got a bit more strength and depth than us. However, we've managed to hold them out till half time, which is pretty good. Let's go for the uh, avenge what happened last time. Bradley Barry's not really performing well up front today, but we'll stick with him. Now, I have been adapting when required. So I'm, I am going to pump the ball into the box because we've not actually seen anything else. Did we lose against Wilson earlier in the season? I feel like we did. 
And here they go again. They, they've looked dangerous. Somehow they haven't scored. Come on, guys, get in there. Tackle Miles. Tackle Miles Jacobson. And it's wide. Nothing has happened for us, though. It's a little bit disappointing. I've got. I've t told um, the keeper to pass to the fullbacks now. Here's Jack Young in a dangerous position. And it's in the back of the net from Barry. We're 1 0 up. This is what we're all about. We break. Oh, Barry, 11th goal of the season. He's only four behind Young. That partnership has worked well. They've had periods where they've struggled to score, but they are getting the goals, aren't they? Lovely ball from Young. The keeper just couldn't quite reach it. It might have even gone in the back of the net if Barry hadn't tapped it in, but he made sure, didn't he? Going to bring Dr. Jones off for Joe Gordon, who's had a nice spell of form for the club. And Lofts is going to come off for Harrison Lane. Harrison Lane... Possibly I should start him instead of Lofts, actually. 1-0 up, but it's a highlight straight away, which is never a good sign. It probably means they're going to score straight away, let's see. Or maybe we will get a goal and get a second, although it doesn't look that way at the moment. This looks dangerous. Uh, what did I say? I'm great at predicting this, aren't I? 1-1. One, one. That was too easy, though. They just walked through us. Look at this. Miles, I mean, Sheriff, what is he doing? I don't know. And then it, it's a couple deflections off my own player. And Bradley, it was straight at him and he couldn't stop the shots. And there you go. That's typical lower league management on FM17, I guess. I'm going to throw on Dan Ormsby for Bradley Berry. He's got his goal. Let's see what Dan Ormsby can do. He's still only got one goal this season in the first team. Looks like it's going to finish 1-1. Another 1-1. It's my most popular result with this tactic. Although there's still 10 seconds to go. I shouldn't really commentators curse and all that, you know. Here they go. But this is the final whistle, surely. There we go. Yeah, overall, it's a good point away from home. We could have got the win. But you know what happens when you score a goal on FM uh, or in real life. You're, you're weakest once you've just scored. I'm going to say unlucky. And we stay in 13th position. There's a few teams with a game in hand. So close. So close in the league. 31 points. We're only two behind ninth place. We are nine points off the playoffs now with 17 games to go. There's still plenty of time. Anything can happen. And if we can put a good run together, convert some of our draws into wins, then you never know really what could happen. Bradley Berry has been showing remarkable improvements during recent training sessions. My head of youth development really likes the word remarkable, I must say. And Hal Croft as well. Remarkable. He's thrown that one in there. Let's look at Berry then. Berry, yeah, he's growing. Certain things are growing. It's nice to see. He's, his composure's going up, which is good. We need to get his finishing and composure up. He's a brilliant dribbler of the ball. Good first touch as well. And technique. He's a technical player. He's got some skills. And I think he's probably got the ability to be better than Jack Young in a way. But Jack Young just keeps on scoring, doesn't he? He's got another assist today as well. Not as many assists as last season. He's more of just getting the goals. But he's, oh, his finishing's gone down. Damn. That's a shame, isn't it? Composure's going up, but finishing is currently going down. But then it was always on a... It was 12.6, wasn't it? It was only just a 13. But it's dropped below for whatever reason. Composure has gone up, though. At the start, he had five. He's increased it by two points finishing's only gone up by one overall now it was two up two, gone up two but certain things going up other things going down we all want jack young to be the hero don't we, we want him to improve he has improved but i hope he can continue to improve although i am training up players to play in the wing back role i am looking for wing backs of course i, I have to be don't i to try and improve the current team uh, let's scout some of these guys. Someone gave me the tip that the unique ID, if you put it on here, you can see what the regens are because they've got longer numbers. Um, two longer numbers. So these are all regens. I think they will start with 139, to be honest. But I'll scout all of these. These can all play left wing back. There's not many around. Not many players natural in the wing back role. You often have to train them up, don't you? And as you can see, some of these players, like Crossley Lima and Ross Cox, Oh no, he's a regen. No. That rule doesn't always apply. I think it's all they all start with one three nine though. Night fever, night fever. Du, 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 du. Ah see, Taylor Coker, two and a half star current ability, so he's gonna be better than Oh no, he's defender left. 
Oh, he's still better than any of my left backs. Left wing back. So apparently Brad Kingsley can play left wing back. Oh, he's comparing them against the, the youth team. I'm confused. Surely Greg Winter's a one star wing back. We've seen that already. I wouldn't play him left wing back. Look at his technical ability. It's truly atrocious. Daryl Polk. Interesting player. I will keep an eye on the players that can play wing back, of course. Taylor Coker, though. Is he any better than Winter? I suppose, I mean, I could always sign him and see how he does. Just sign him. So, I mean, I'm trying to avoid the appearance fee things, but in this case, it doesn't matter so much. It's only until the end of the season. He's on a long contract until I give him a proper contract, I guess. And if he doesn't play, then he won't get paid. I'll try and reduce it anyway. 90 quid. Just put these down a bit. Save as much money as possible, you know. We'll give him a go. I think he's probably the best one going. Sebastian McDonald. Another option. Now, crossing and dribbling, marking, tackling. They're okay. They can be improved upon. He's a relatively pacey as well. Determined. Work great. Works hard. But I don't think he's going to be up to standard. Graeme Treadwell. He's okay as well. But if we look at Winter, he's sort of good average at everything. Which is why I've, I quite like him. And because crossing, dribbling, he can actually... He's got five on finishing, six on first touch, five on heading defensively. And technique and he's okay technically it's not astonishing at all but uh, physically and mentally he sort of makes up for it doesn't he <sighs> I don't know I quite Greg, Greg Winter's been playing well I can't drop him no Lane's what what late Harrison Lane has picked up a serious viral infection poor guy poor guy I'm gonna have to send him to wait physio why would i send him to a specialist if it takes longer than leaving him to my physio so my physio is much better with viral infections than a specialist well i'm leaving to the physio then aren't i what could it be like badger flu or something is that a thing probably a badger 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 mushroom mushroom snake snake okay so the other wing backs that i scouted gareth aldred i like the name but he's useless. He's, he's not going to turn into anything. Joe Henderson. He's okay. Slightly worse version of Greg Winter, but on the right-hand side. I don't know. He's, they're not good enough. I'd rather play Howcroft there than any of these guys. Ross Cox. Nah. Nah. That, uh, no. Uh, but Taylor Coker, I'm going to give him a go. Taylor Coker will... I'll put him in the first team, but I'll make him available for the under-23s to build up his match fitness. And we will train him as a wing back, of course. Wing back. What's he need to be? What's he need to be better at? He's got better crossing than Winter. Maybe he is better than Winter. You can't improve work rate, can you? He's all right. I, I, he could be good. Let's improve his tackling. I think that's quite important for a wing back. Here's some more. Getting so many different options now. Declan Cumbers, <laughs> Cumbers, uh, is okay at certain things. Right wing back. He's not as good as how Hal oh Halcroft's got up to two stars at right wing back. He's excelling at the role. Look at him. He's a he's a machine. Everything's going up. What a legend. I love this guy. Uh, Cumbers is an option. Let's look at the other ones. Oh, you might be wondering what's happened to Mister. I've basically put him in the under twenty threes because he doesn't fit into playing wing back, and I've not got any wingers in the formation. So he's played for the under twenty threes at the moment, despite the fact they will be playing the same formation as me. But he'll, he'll play some games, I'm sure. Liam Woodland's failed his medical ahead of this match, so he won't be back, I'm afraid. So this is the team I've selected to take on Sutton United. Couple changes. I've decided to put Grant War in there, give him a run out. Ulla Connolly's come into the back line. I was going to go with Harrison Lane, but now he's injured for a long time with Badger flu or something. And Gordon has come into the midfield instead of Dr. Jones. I do I do like go, Joe Gordon. Go, go, Go Jordan. Uh, yeah, his assi he's got three assists this year. He's played a lot more games in the first team, mainly off the bench. Let's give him a chance from st a starting position and see how he gets on. Average rating isn't the best, uh, but it's not terrible anyway. And we'll see how he does alongside Mills. Young and Berry staying up front. Now we'll take on, on Sutton United, who are a division above us. They got promoted last year. And they are mid-table in the division. It's very close, though, as you can see at the bottom. So let's get on with this. This is a massive game for us, taking on a club in a division above us. Can we get through another round of 
the FA Trophy. Be nice to have a bit of a cup run. Didn't do so well in the FA Cup this year, but this is the furthest we've got in the FA Trophy easily. This is the first time we've actually reached the, the proper rounds of the FA Trophy. So what I'm going to say is Avenge. Ooh. And the morale is exceptional at the moment. We haven't lost a game for a while. Even if we lose today, at least uh, uh, we've got a good unbeaten run in the league going. We're likely to lose today, aren't we? Please smash the like button as usual. It'd be much appreciated. Your support is just wonderful. Thank you. Here are Sutton then in their bright yellow kits. Yellow versus green. It's, uh, it's an interesting mix, isn't it? But Winter slams that clear. Can Young get on the end of this? He's not quite got the pace there to beat Conroy. And Hale Brown can clear it up the pitch for Sutton. But a lovely header. I think that was from a look only, but he's... We've not managed to get hold of the ball, and here they come, looking dangerous, and that's a good save by Grant Ward, diving to his left like a crab, and it's almost half-time, and look how the two, like Simmons and Winter, just budge up together for the goal kicks, and they just, we play it out, there's no one there, come on guys, get in there, win it back, probably could have tackled there, Joe Gordon, but just allowing play on good knock away Mills heads it away but they're still on the attack here it's going to be a shot probably and war catches quite simply we've only had one shot in this first half but they've only had four however there's still time to get a goal before the half time whistle blows here's Berry it's into Young it's into Dion Mills who hits the post oh that was a good opportunity it was a clear cut chance now I'm never sure about these things like there's nothing to lose today so go up there and give it your best shot I feel like it's asking for trouble. I'm, I'm going to say I'm pleased though. I, I mean, I am pleased. Uh, the midfield maybe could be a bit better. I'm going to say that. Dion Mills is deep in thought, as is Gareth Sheriff. I just imagine him thinking about Plato and philosophy and various things when they're deep in thought. Maybe one of the players should be a philosopher in his spare time. Write philosophical textbooks for philosophy and ethics A-level. I did philosophy and ethics at A-level. It's quite interesting, actually. Utilitarianism and all that. Nothing much going on in this game. Which is... It suits me, to be honest. I assume it will go to extra time again if it if it ends as a draw. I'm going to throw on Latham, who hasn't played a huge amount lately, which is why he's not really match fit. But he's going to go as a support target man. And what I'm going to do is we're going to pump it long to him. Can we pull off a shock? I think it's going to extra time here. Nothing's happened in the second half. Let's go for that. That's worked well. Look to gain confidence. Beautiful stuff. Greg Winter's not playing particularly well today, though. Is he 6.3? Not really seen him make any mistakes, to be fair. I'm going to take off Joe Gordon. On comes Dr. Jones, the legend. I've still got one more sub to make, if necessary. If it's a draw, then it goes to a replay, doesn't it? Nothing has happened. I think I just have to go attacking now. A replay at their ground is always going to be tough. So let's lump it long to the to Latham. And we'll push up and just go for it. I'm going to bring on Ormsby for Jack Young. It's a gamble, but I think it's a gamble worth taking. Let's give Dan Ormsby a chance for glory. Nothing is happening. It's really weird. Passionate and courage. I've done all the right things to win this game in terms of team talks, I think. But they might end up winning here. They've, there's... A minute left to go. They could break our hearts. They have broken our hearts. I think it's all over. We're out of the FA Trophy. A last gasp. We're on the receiving end of a last gasp goal. It's unfortunate, isn't it? It was always likely to happen, I suppose. We've done ourselves proud today against the team in the, the division above us. We've taken them to the very last couple of minutes of this game. It's it's a good finish. And that's it. We're out. Dion Mills had the chance to win it in proper time, remember? That is really unfortunate. And lucky boys, that's boosted the confidence. That's all right. I mean, it's not the end of the world this episode. We've drawn a game. We've lost a game in the FA Trophy. It does mean we can concentrate on our league campaign. And our next game against Ebsfleet is a big one. Top of the table, Ebsfleet. Uh, Dulwich Hamlet after that fifth, they're a playoff team. Remember, we lost against them. We were thrashed by them a couple of episodes ago. A Bogna Regis, our bogey team this year. So it's a tough old few games for us. We could be dropping back down towards the relegation zone. Um, Hunkerford Town, they were in the relegation zone, weren't they? Suddenly they're 15th. Dartford. So the next game, next episode 
what I will probably do is have a couple of games like Hungerford. I'll take on Hungerford and Dartford. And then we'll play a few games and then do the end of season special again. I think that's the best thing to do. So let's take on Hungerford and Dartford. Please hit the like button on this video. Let me know where I should visit, either in England or in the world. It's up to you. You can let me know in the comment section below. And I will see you in episode 24.